Would you like to know which is the secret ingredient that will make you bake from this bread till this one with the same wick flour? Stay watching this video. Good morning everyone and welcome to another baking video. And when we're talking about baking, about bread, what is the main ingredient? I was talking about flour. But when we're talking about bread flour, which one is the one that we use the most? Strong wheat flour. Okay, I understood gluten, what is the strong wheat flour? But what happens if you don't have any? Don't worry, because gluten has the solution. So the strong wheat flour, basically what is it? It's just flour with a lot of gluten, around 14 to 16 percent. The gluten is a protein that builds a famous gluten network, the one that gives the loaf the shape of a bread. And it also helps to retain all the gases of the fermentation, building the crumb. Hmm. Perfect timing. Hello? What? <laughs> I already have that problem. <laughs> Wrong call, sorry. That's the one. Hi. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm on my way. So finally, here I have the secret ingredient. Maybe did we are the mailman, right? Leave me comments, what do you think about it? Enough, let's cut the boot. This is pure gluten. So wait a second, that's me, milled. What did I say about the boot? Okay, yeah, sorry, sorry. Okay, so as I said, what I have here is 100% pure gluten. And that's what a weak flour lacks of. So what are we going to do? We're going to add gluten in the flour. So this kind of procedure of adding the secret ingredient into the flour, it's something that the Mills Laboratory have been doing for ages. This is a way to keep the same quality of the flour during the year. So the idea of today's video is to replicate this, but here in my lab, in a more homemade style. But how much gluten do we have to add? First of all, we need to know how much protein has the flour that we are using. In this case, I have this wick flour, which is also pastry flour, and here it says that we have 4.5 grams in 50 grams. So in 100 grams, we're going to have 9%. A strong wheat flour has around 14%, so we have to go from 9 to 14, that's 5%. So we know that for each 1% of gluten that we add into the flour, the strength of the flour will rise 0.6%. So in this case, we need to rise 5%. So now, what we need to do is a simple rule of three. Don't worry and follow me. So we have that 0.6% final strength flour, it's just 1% gluten. So we need to grow to 5%. That means that we need to add 8 and 33 grams by every 100 grams flour. Okay, so you've seen that review and a little bit of mathematics, it's not that bad. But now that we know the secret gluten formula, it's time to start baking our bread. But what do you think if we raise the bar a little bit and instead of baking one bread, we bake four breads? So in the first one, we'll be using the flour just as it comes out of the bag. In the second one, we will use what we've calculated, 8 grams of gluten. In the third one, we'll move to 10 grams of gluten. And in the fourth, we'll move to 12 grams of gluten. But before we start baking, let's make first a flour test. In a bowl, I will add 100 grams of the flour that we are going to use. Then I add the extra gluten, and finally, 80 grams of water. Now we start mixing, no kneading, because what we're going to do is an autolyze. And we'll leave it covered for two hours. So here I have not one, instead four different autolyzes. In this first one, I did not add any gluten at all. 
The second one, we have eight grams of gluten. Then I move to 10 grams of gluten and finally 12 grams of gluten. What I'm looking for in this autolyze is to check the gluten membrane and see how much I can stretch it tears apart. Okay, with wet hands, I'll start stretching this dough. It's looking good, but stretching. Interesting. It didn't last it as much as I thought. Okay, it has no gluten at all. Oh, what a mess. Let's go with the 8%. Okay, with my wet hands, and here I go again. Oh, it feels totally different. It's not as sticky as the first one. And check this gluten membrane. Wow, incredible. Really translucent. And, wow, kind of big. Here I can feel the magic. Okay, good job. Let's move on to the next one, 10%. One more time, wet my hands, and I pick up the dough. Oh, this one is heavy. Stretching a little more, oh, it feels tense. Oh, check this membrane, super translucent, and I'm feeling stronger than the last one. Good, oh, oh okay. But that was really good. And now time of the 12% added gluten. Okay, I wet my hands for the last time and let's start stretching this dough. It feels kinda like the other one, yeah, okay. Start stretching, some resistance. I don't feel too much difference between this one and the last one. But it's looking good, okay. Translucent. Good. Well, that's enough. So far, this experiment showed us very interesting things. The first flour with no added gluten was really better than I thought. So I thought it's going to be a little bit, but not surprising. Then we added eight grams of gluten, and I think that's the one. Then 10%, it was okay, but just 12%, I think it's maybe too much. But since this is an experiment, as I told you, we need to continue. Time to start baking. All right, let's go with the first bread, the one with no added gluten. I'll be using the paddle because it's better when you work with high hydration doughs. And here is the recipe. And I also will be checking how much longer it takes each dough to develop the gluten. It took us 10 minutes exactly in this first dough without no gluten added. Dough one ready. I'll leave it here, bulk fermenting for around four hours and then we'll be ready to shape it. Okay, time to start mixing the second dough with eight grams of added gluten. And here is a formula. minutes, let's check the gluten. What? Oh. Oh. <laughs> let's go with the third one with 10 grams of added gluten. And here is the formula. Good, six minutes. Let's check the dough. <laughs> wow. 
Okay, this one too, four hours bulk fermentation. All right, time to mix the last dough of the video. And here is the formula. Four minutes. Let's check this. Whoa. What? <laughs> okay, I leave this one too. Bulk fermenting for four hours and I'll see what happens. Are you lost with all the sourdough bread recipes that you find on the internet? Would you like to learn all the tips and tricks to make your own sourdough bread at home, then I have the solution. I have designed the perfect masterclass of sourdough bread just made for you. By clicking the link on the description, you will learn how to make and take care of your sourdough starter, how to knead, shape, ferment, and bake your sourdough bread, how to use and read the baker's percentage, all the basic techniques to bake like a pro at home, and how to read and understand your dough. Don't miss out on it and click the link on the description right now. And by the magic of the gluten, here we have the four doughs already bulk fermented, ready to be shaped. Let's take a look closer. Let's go first with the zero gluten added. And as you can see, it's really well fermented. It's full of air. There's a reasonable gluten development. Let's move to the second one. Check all the space that we have here. This means that we have an interesting gluten development. And it's also well rised, ready to be shaped. And now let's move to the one with 10 grams. And wow, check this one. It's huge. The gluten development is massive. And it's also full of air. Very well fermented. And now let's move to the 12 grams of gluten and whoa, it's almost flying off the bowl. Incredible. This gluten development, mmm. Time to start with the no added gluten dough. It looks like familiar. It's kind of doughs that I always do. So this is the first one and everything looks okay. Time to continue with the 8 grams of added gluten. Now I'm feeling this one a little bit more tighter than the first one, but it's full of air, excellent fermentation. Let's shape it. Hmm. Wow! It feels super tight, with just eight grams of gluten extra. Ten grams of added gluten. This is a little bit scary. Check this ball of dough. It's huge, massive, a lot of gluten development. It's so tight, but at the same time, it's all full of air. Okay, let's shape it. What is this? <laughs> this looks like a rugby ball. <laughs> it's super tight. Okay, time for the 12 grams of added gluten. I just can say no more. Wow, it hasn't lost its shape. It's incredible, this gluten development. Ready, but please someone tell me, what is this? Excellent. 
Excellent. Finally, I have the four loaves shaped. The one with no added gluten, the one with eight grams of gluten, 10 grams of gluten and 12 grams of gluten. Now we'll make a pause. Well, the loaves are going to make the pause because they're going to sleep in the fridge until tomorrow. See you. Okay, come with me and let's take a look. At first sight, what we see here in the first bread, which has no added gluten, is that the loaf occupies the whole panetton. It's filled with bread. Now take a look at the second one. This is the one with 8% gluten added and it looks well fermented, but it's a little bit more tight. And now let's check the one with 10%. Now the panetton has some space, as you can see. So this loaf is a little bit more tighter than the other one. And come and check the last one, the one with 12% gluten added. Here, there's a lot of space. It's not occupying the banneton at all. It's super tight. So let's see what happens in the oven. Oh, so here I have the four Dutch ovens preheated at 482 degrees Fahrenheit. And for accurate measures in this experiment, I'm going to bake the four loaves at the same time. May the gluten be with them. Time to take them out. And here are the loaves. So this one is the one with no added gluten. Here's the one with eight grams of added gluten. This is the one with 10 grams. And finally, this one with 12 grams. Time to check the first loaf, the one with no added gluten. At first sight, I'm liking it. It's light, it's hollow. The caramelization of the crust is excellent. That's here. Yes. 
The shape, well, it could be a little bit more larger, more taller too, but it's okay. We're using a very weak flour. Okay, so let's slice it and see how it's a crumb. Good, beautiful crumb. Think that this is an all-purpose flour, mainly thought to be used in pastry. And look at this open crumb that we have here. It's moist, with big pockets too, and it's high hydration. It means that this flour is not that bad. So let's see what happens when we start adding gluten. Now we move to the second loaf, the one with eight grams of added gluten. It's totally different as the first one. Now, this is almost like a ball, it's huge, it's much more higher, and it's also super light, hollow, the crust is beautiful. Let's open it up and check the crumb. What? This crumb is amazing. This is what I've been looking for. Check these big air pockets in here. Totally different as the first one. So take a look at this shape. It's a round shape with a thin crust and crispy, and the crumb is very moist. I'm loving this kind of bread, so eight grams of gluten seems to be correct. Third bread, the one with 10 grams of added gluten. The shape is interesting. It's almost like a turtle, but it's super light at the same time. It's crispy. Wow, sounds okay, but what's inside? Why don't we open it? So, what an interesting crumb too. Maybe not as much with those big air pockets as the second one, but it looks great. It's really soft, humid and tender. Maybe because the glitter network was so strong, it couldn't open and get those big air pockets that we're looking for. Maybe this was too much tension. Or maybe we could have left it more time doing cold fermentation. That helped this gluten network to lose a little bit, but it's okay, this bread too. And the fourth loaf of the day is really, really light. And I don't know what kind of shape it has. But I'm loving it, the crust is beautiful, super light as I said, and I want to know what is inside of this loaf. Let's open it. Nice crumb too, maybe not that open as the third one or the second one. Maybe this too much gluten strength has tightened the crumb and didn't let it grow as it could and develop all those big holes that I like. But it is tender, it's humid, it's okay, but I think 12 grams of gluten was too much. I think first on the flour test, then when we start kneading, and finally when we shape the bread. So this is the result, it was okay, this is an experiment. So now we've reached the end of the video and here in front of your eyes you can see the whole experiment. The first bread with no added gluten, 8 grams of gluten, 10 grams of gluten and 12 grams of gluten. In my opinion I think that the winner is this one, the one with 8 grams of gluten. We move from 9% to 14% which is an interesting strong wheat flour. These two ones here Maybe that was too much strength, so what I recommend, and maybe in another video I'll be doing that, is to let them more time in the fridge doing cold fermentation. I hope you have enjoyed this experiment. Please let me know what another kind of experiment would you like to see in my channel. Like it, share it, and I'll see you in the next one. I hope you have enjoyed this video. And if you want to learn more about sourdough bread and sourdough starter, I encourage you to check the link on the description. And remember, this masterclass was specially designed for you.